Hi there, welcome to the Yuxtuff channel and welcome to this comparison video of painted entry-level ukuleles. I have four different brands and I'm also going to throw in uh, three others that sort of fit this category. Basically, I'm more than making a comparison, I want you to see some of the issues and to know kind of what to look for. I'm going to start off with this one, which is the model that I most recently reviewed. This one is the Donner DUS-10. Pretty nice looking, but it had some issues, uh, particularly a really thick laminate that's being used, a thick maple laminate, and really tight string spacing with sort of a narrow nut. And this one sort of... has sort of a deader sound. It has some sustain, but it's on the low end and it's sort of tubby and caught in the sound. So, so just playing a couple of things real quick. picking. All right. So that is a quick look at the Donner DUS-10. Now let's compare it with some of its competitors on the market. The next instrument on our list is this one. It's the Lotke Soprano Ukulele sort of painted that might be a semi-transparent stain and this is another one that i ended up buying myself a uh, couple things that had really really uh, sharp frets uh, which impacted the instrument a bit and really bad strings so listen to the sound of this one Now, that one, I think, actually ends up having a little bit better sound than the Donner because it's just a little bit brighter. Um, the constructions are very similar, but this one actually, um, if I remember correctly, the actual label of the instrument is accidentally now on the side of the instrument. So, I mean, you can see there are quality issues when you buy some of these super inexpensive ukuleles. Our next model was sent to me for review purposes. This is the Naneki Soprano, another painted soprano. And actually this one surprised me because it doesn't have any kerfing on the inside. The instrument is just glued together, but then again, probably with a laminate instrument, that's probably more than enough. But this is what this one sounds like. So ultimately, this one I think has the best sound of those three instruments that are all sort of a similar quality. Um, this one kind of has a really neat headstock. The negative on this one is really that the paint has started chipping on the side where some of the frets are popping through. Now it's still not sharp, but as the frets pop through the paint, it's sending some of the, the paint off. And this one does have uh, side position marker is the first one that does so. So of those three instruments, if I was going to spend my money on either the Donner or the Lotke or the Naneki, the Neki is the way that I would go. Now, there are some more instruments to take a look at here. Our next instrument recently came to me as I purchased another one. It was a two-for-one deal that I purchased used. It is a Macala Dolphin. It happens to be a pink one. So, uh, Pink is not normally my color. This one has obviously some wear. 
And the difference with this one is that it does have a plastic body with a laminate soundboard top. So it's not exactly apples for apples with the other three, but most of the time I would send you to one of these than any one of the previous three models. So here's what this one sounds like. Now, I have no idea how old the strings are on this instrument. So um, just as a side note, I'm going to show you something else here. I have yet another McCullough Dolphin that I bought some time ago, and this one has fluorocarbon strings. I think fluorocarbon strings sometimes can bring out some brightness on an instrument, and I think that's really true of these Macalos. So listen to this. And you get a lot more sustain and brightness there, but these Macala Dolphins also have sort of a dark tone to them at the same time. Um, you know, so they have they have a darkness to it, sort of a, a deeper tone, but they also have some sparkle and shine. The shape of that body certainly doesn't hurt either. Um, so again, if you were looking at any of the instruments so far, I would probably send you to Macala Dolphin and then ask you to put on fluorocarbon strings, or at least try that to see if you liked it a little better. Now, our next instrument is actually not gonna be a step up, it's gonna be a step back, but the very first ukuleles that I bought, I bought for my school, and they were these. These are the Mahalo MK uh, TB1 series. It's an awful color, sort of a stain, very light instrument, a little bit top heavy, um, and lots of problems. High action. Um, this one, my boys broke at some point, and I was able to just glue it back together with some uh, wood glue or Typon or something like that. I've seen some of these where the bridges rip off, whatever, but it's a functional ukulele. And I think in some ways it has some better sound. Now these are also fluorocarbon strings, not the original bad strings. Well, the original strings are just awful on these. But this is what this one sounds like. Yeah, very much a cheap sounding ukulele. And ultimately, I would tell you not to buy this one. And it would I, I would actually put this one behind the Donner. So at the time, this was about the cheapest you could get into an ukulele back in 2016, late 2015, for a functional ukulele. And it does function, but there are just much better instruments out there for not a whole lot more money. Now let me go to two final instruments. Since we've already looked at Macala Dolphin, the other instrument in that same sort of vein would be the Flight Travel Ukuleles, and this is a soprano. And this is actually one of the first generation of Flight Travel Ukuleles. They've changed them a little bit over time. I added a strap button back there. Uh, they've adjusted how they do the bridge and the saddle. Um, they've changed the fret markers. So really, it still is the same instrument with that nice, spacious nut, 36 millimeter nut, 
uh, a nice profile to the neck, a little bit of that texture to the neck, and of course an ABS body, ABS neck, and a laminate soundboard. So it kind of puts it in that category of Macala Dolphin without ever having to worry about sharp frets or where your action is going to be, because I know at least on the yellow one I've adjusted the action. But again, here's the flight travel. And this one also is running fluorocarbon strings. I usually run Martin strings on these. All right, here's how this one sounds. <laughs> instrument for us to take a look at. One of my longtime favorite cheap instruments has been this instrument, the IRC Soprano Pineapple. And there was a time when you could order one of these for under $20 shipped to the United States. Unfortunately, uh, the going price right now, I think, starts around $25 or $26 and then it costs you $15 or $16 to ship it. So it does put you at a more expensive price point, plus you have to wait for it from China. But that said, it's a traditionally built laminate instrument, so it's not a painted instrument. It's a little bit in a different category. And just, again, hear the difference of this as well. And this one is still running its stock sort of Aquila-like strings. I'm not sure if they're Aquila strings or not. Um, again, swapping them out with Martin fluorocarbons. I like this instrument even better. But again, it's an affordable solution. So as I close out this video, let me just again summarize the different instruments. I'll just pull them up one at a time and show you. The Mahalo, avoid this one. That's not saying that all Mahalos are bad. I haven't reviewed any other ones. I haven't played any other ones but I would not do that instrument. The Donner here has been on sale for like $20. Still, I wouldn't spend your money there. I would go to a better Donner. If you're interested in a Donner, get a better Donner. The lot key here, I think again, is just best avoided until they solve some quality control issues and uh, provide it with better strings and smooth frets for the new player. The Naneki is actually surprisingly good for considering what you're spending and what you're getting. However, I think for a few more dollars, once again, you can get into a better instrument, even from their larger mother company, Smeager, than just buying the Naneki here. All right, so that leads us to three instruments that I can completely recommend to you without hesitation. The first, of course, would be the Macala Dolphin or Shark. Nothing wrong with these. You might need to get them set up. You might get sharp fret ends over time. Both of those things are possible, but as a whole, this is a still a serviceable instrument years after it was introduced. The next instrument that I can recommend to you without hesitation are the Flight Travel Ukuleles, regardless of size. I will be reviewing the Concert Scale model soon, and I have reviewed the long neck ukulele in the past as well, the long neck travel. Um, this one starts to uh, get close to the experience of playing a magic fluke instrument. So it sort of uh, has qualities of the dolphin and the magic fluke all in one. So this is also a great instrument. And of course, if you can get a hold of one because they're not sold in stores, I still really do love these IRC pineapple soprano ukuleles. Uh, just keep your eye open for them. Sometimes they show up on eBay. Sometimes they'll show up on Amazon 
or you can find them in some other places, but these still continue to be really well-made, great sounding, great playing ukuleles for the price. All right, thanks so much for joining me for this little comparison video. I hope you're having a great day and I'll be back soon with some more uke stuff for you.